Hello guys and welcome to my new video. So today I'm going to be doing a 7.25 Resto Druid 5 man healing guide. So this is going to be a relatively short video mainly describing what kind of talents, affixes, stats, tiers and legendaries you should be using while running Mythic Plus content in Tomb of Sergeras um, in patch 7.25. So just to just start off things we can actually go and look at talents. So talents are actually going to be very, very personalized based on the affix that you have that following week, um, based on the amount of stats you have, based on the amount, the composition of your group, if you have a weak tank, if you have a tank that's going to dip low a lot of the times, even based on the class of the tank, you can actually determine things like that. Um, so there really isn't a right and wrong talent build for five months. Uh, I would consider for let's say for example for so for an affix let's say this week teaming explosive and fortified uh, there's going to be a lot of heavy tank damage i like to classify damages into a or affixes into aoe affix and into a single target healing affix so things like skittish where tank will lose aggro a dps is gonna get one or two hit and maybe possibly die i would consider heavy healing single target healing talent build is going to be the best so for that kind of affix, I would go Abundance, Displacer Beast. You can either choose depending on which, uh, depending on how good your group is. If you want to do a conserved amount of DPS, Feral Affinity is quite good. If you feel you're doing a high level key and you might taking, you might be taking a lot of damage, I would consider Guardian Affinity, especially if you don't run the Legendary Neck Predus, which gives you a shield. You can, uh, the level, tier 60 affix, it basically depending um, or sorry, tier 60 talent is basically depending on the affix you're going to be doing. If it's Sanguine, Typhoon is one of the best things to use. If it's things like Fortified, you can maybe stun a mob and help your tank out. So it's all based on the affix that you're going to go. Um, 75 tier talent is probably most likely is going to be Cultivation. Just because it's a passive healing that you don't have to do anything. People are going to take a lot of damage and it's going to kick in with a Mastery. Because like I mentioned in the future... Mastery is one of the best stats to do in 5 man. So Cultivation Germination is a go-to here. You probably will never change this to any other uh, talent. Uh, germination is going to be here most likely along with Cultivation. Uh, level 100 talent is actually very interchangeable. I actually feel all of these are very viable. So like I mentioned in an affix where it's skittish, a person can get two shot. It's heavy single target healing is going to be really good. So the reason I pick Abundance is because for each rejuvenation you have active the cast time of healing touch, which we're not really going to use, is reduced by 10% and the critical effect chance of regrowth is increased by 10%. So if you have, by default, regrowth has a really high crit chance. So in most cases, if you're rolling with three rejuvenations in your fireman group, which you should be doing at all times, it's going to be a 100% crit chance. For regrowth so you gotta remember that regrowth also applies a hot on the target uh, that's going to apply mastery and therefore it's going to increase healing by a large amount on that target so along with abundance moment of clarity i found works really well for affixes where you need that single target healing why first of all moment of clarity is a proc chance which again is not a great thing but once it procs it gives you a clear casting or omen of clarity three next three free regrowths so and they're going to be healing for extra 15 percent so abundance gives you basically a free a, a crit a regrowth crit every time and moment of clarity gives you a 15 percent bigger regrowth so but and it's free so when you see clear casting you're going to be casting free regrowths you're going to be casting really powerful regrowths and this actually works really well with affixes like Tyrannical, where boss, let's say a high affix Tyrannical, where bosses are actually really, really long, can last up to 3 to 4 minutes. And maybe sometimes you have to maintain like 800k HPS healing. An example can be Lower Karza and Morose, where the fight can last 3 to 4 minutes, and you're actually probably going to be doing around 800k uh, HPS. Free regrowths are going to be a godsend. They're going to be really good. They're, like in that, in those kind of fights, you almost consider, you almost should consider using a mana regen trinket such as Dark Moon Deck Promises. But Moment of Clarity can really save you mana. If your tank is going to really get hammered for specific weeks like Fortified, if there's big big trash balls like in Eye of Ashara in the third boss or actually the fourth boss, 
bef there's two ads they are probably going to be in teaming there's probably going to be more than three uh, more than two they can really wreck your tank and if your tank is taking a lot of damage stone bike can actually be used and flourish can be used for any other affixes which i consider heavy heavy aoe healing so if i remember quaking bursting and fortified is a heavy aoe build uh, healing affix so for those kind of things you don't really have to go with abundance you can almost go with prosperity scenario ward and you'll most likely will go with flourish because you want to extend your hearts and you want to basically get uh, more healing to everyone grievous i would consider a mixture between single target and uh, aoe i would still run heavy regrowth build I, i'm going to call this a heavy regrowth build um, because it gives you really powerful regrowths on in my view when you fight man healing it uh, your hots act as a mastery buffer and your regrowth is basically a the filler spell that actually does all the heavy lifting healing your uh, healing your players so this is one this is one way of actually going uh, for the talents in mythic content in mythic plus content for restoration druid so i kind of covered a little bit about affixes to what i consider a heavy regrowth build and what i consider a heavy uh, heavy aoe build now for these things you also have to consider stats so if you look for five months i would consider haste and mastery to be the number one stats for restoration druid mastery is basically equivalent or even better than intellect mastery is going to make your heals more powerful while haste is going to make your heals faster so what do you need more in a five month scenario you need fast heavy fast powerful heals and um, now the reason why i don't really run heavy crit build is because i use abundance and by using abundance i don't really care about regrowth crits regrowth is one of my main spells in finance i already have 100 percent uh, crit from abundance so therefore i don't value crit as highly because i don't consider a hot that crits to be a, a very a life saving ability or life saving spell so therefore that's why i don't consider crit to be very good with abundance spec now it is a personal opinion but no matter what mastery and haste are going to be your two number one choices in mythic plus content and why are we saying mastery is going to be very good mastery is going to be very good because the more hots you're gonna have on your target the more healing you're gonna do so by having two hots on the target and a regrowth buff you're gonna be healing way more on that target so therefore in five man content you can have or you can maintain those two hots for everyone you can maintain regrowth crit hot as well on a, on a lot of the people so therefore mastery is better than intellect and should be stacked along with haste because the worst thing that can happen in mythic, mythic plus content for things like skittish your melee is getting targeted he gets hit you have one or two seconds to react you're casting your regrowth but it's too slow and the person dies again this is might not be your fault but you could have maybe prevented a death if you had more haste so uh, besides that we can actually look at some of the tier sets that are available in 7.25 so um, in 7.2 we are tier 19 which i'm currently using as well tier 19 uh, wild gold grants you 4000 mastery for seven seconds so this is actually one of the biz uh, two sets that you can use in five man content mastery is the best content in five months so it is highly sought after you should get tier 19 two set by default the fourth set which gives you a free rejuvenation uh, is not good at all and it should not be using tier 19 for set for five months because you'll have a rejuvenation on most of the people anyways and that rejuvenation proc because there's only five people is very low so you should not be stacking tier 19 for set instead you should actually look into trying to get tier 24 set so if you look at tier 24 set which i have right now just two set of it uh, the cooldown of swiftman is reduced by up to 40 percent based on the current health of the target which is actually very very weak two set is something that is probably not going to give you a lot of uh, synergy unless you actually end up using something like the legendary ring soul of the arch druid which gives you a gain of soul of the forest talent again soul of the forest talent gives you a increased he increased the uh, wild growth you should only be using wild growth but you can actually use uh, increased rejuve rejuvenation or even regrowth depending on a, a five month situation which actually makes it really really flexible if you feel the tank is going to be taking a lot of damage in the future you can actually click swift mend and then click rejuvenation and that's going to increase rejuvenation by up to 200 percent 
uh, if you feel there's a lot of AoE damage coming in for things like quaking and bursting, if you feel that someone missed out on a bursting, uh, bursting add or anything like that, uh, you can actually click Swift Man and then you can click Wild Growth for a 75% more powerful Wild Growth. So this ring actually, this ring is actually very, I would actually use it in a lot of the AoE, heavy AoE build scenarios based on the affixes that you use. But let's go back to tier 20. So tier 22 set by itself without the legendary solo the Arch Druid ring is actually very, very weak. And most likely should not be used because it's going to be, give you a very like percentage based gain. Now the 4 set, Swiftman increases your efflorescence healing by 200% for 10 seconds, is actually better than a tier 19 4 set itself, which gives you a free rejuvenation, which most likely will not be needed. So, the best case or dream tier scenario right now is to have a 20 tier 20 4 set and tier 19 2 set equipped. This is going to give you the best of both worlds, this is going to allow you to use Soul of the Arch Shield Ring if you feel it's necessary for AoE. Now, I know what people are going to be saying is that tier 24 set, which gives you increased efflorescence, is not that good for 5 months. You can almost use it like a burst heal. You can, you can try and get at least 2 people in your efflorescence every time you swift man. So you just swift man and then you place your efflorescence under your tank or maybe your melee. And even 2 people who are affected by it, they're going to get healed like in a burst case scenario. Right now, efflorescence is just a continuous small amount of healing over time. With tier 24, that is going to become much more of a burst case uh, applier, basically. So, tier 19, 2 set, tier 24 set is the best way to go. If you do not have tier 20, or if you have higher item levels at the moment, just use tier 19, 2 set. That's all you need. You do not need to use tier 19, 4 set. Like me, for example, I'm using chest, I'm using helm, I'm using higher item level gloves, uh, legs, uh, and uh, drape and even shoulders so i do not care about anything else except for having the two set and it's working out pretty well at the moment so let's talk about legendaries so legendaries are going to again highly depend on what kind of affix are you going to be going after um like i said before the AO heavy regrowth build which is a single target uh, single target affix or it's recommended for single target healing affix affixes uh, i would by default, probably the two legendaries you're probably going to be using is Valence and Pridus. So why? Valence by, is one of the best healing increasing legendaries out there. The stats is, are very good. Uh, it's, an, it's a click effect, so use it when you need extra healing. Pridus is an amazing tool for higher level Mythic Plus content where you actually could be one shot. Example comes to mind is uh, Dark Heart Ticket, that is Shade of Savius, the last boss, where he casts Shadow Bolts uh, on uh, random targets. Those Shadow Bolts at high level, uh, a high level Mythic on Tyrannical can one-shot you and will one-shot you without having Pridus or without popping a personal cooldown. So why risk it? Run with something that's going to keep you alive and therefore keep you healing. Now, if you do not feel Pridus is needed, you can actually swap out for things like um, Legendary Belts. Uh, if I can find it right here, so Legendary Belt, the Dark Titus Advice, is a very good single target heal that comes from Life Bloom. You can almost, in a lot of case scenarios, just place Life Bloom on your tank and just forget about him or her. Uh, you can just place Life Bloom and just focus on everyone else, because, and you have to main, make sure to maintain Life Bloom on them. This is probably going to cause your Life Bloom to be like top 3 heal in a Mythic Plus content, depending on how much tank takes, of course. Things like Death Knights, we can self-heal, this might not be as much used, but it's still an amazing legendary to use. Now, I should also mention that you Sholos are not really as good as anymore. I should also mention that you can use Gloves, uh, Zoni's Caress, which um, Iron Bark has 20% reduced cooldown, and uh, all of your duration healing is going, or at least 75% of the healing for each of the active durations is going to the Iron Bark target. This is a very good tool to use on Necrotic Weeks, you got, but make sure if you are using the Legendary Gloves, you need to pick Stone Bark, which reduces your Iron Bark to about 45 seconds or 48 seconds. And on Fortified Weeks, on Fortified Necrotic Weeks, this almost means you're going to have Iron Bark for every pack, every trash pack. And if your, if your tank is taking too many uh, stacks of Necrotic, this can actually save lives and it's actually advisable to use. Now, besides that scenario, the legendary gloves are very weak, and this is the only niche kind of uh, moment to use it. Um, as I mentioned before, Pridus and Valence 
is probably the best are probably the best legendaries to use i also mentioned that you can get away with using soul of the arch druid which gives you soul of the forest uh, talent only if you have tier 22 set tier 22 set which is the cooldown of your swiftman so the forest relies on having as many swiftmans as you, as you can get so therefore you can time your swiftmans you can hold your swiftmans until you feel there's aoe damage or until you feel this heavy heavy single target damage press swiftman and then you go regrowth rejuvenation a while ago for an increased healing burst only with tier 22 set now i think this has been a short overview of some of the basic mechanics for mythic plus content as a restoration druid please let me know how you feel about this guide how you feel about what things I, i've said uh, the tier sets have you got tier 24 set have you got tier 22 set how do you find the soul of the arch druid ring and things like that and thank you for watching this little overview guide and i'll see you in my next video